What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. This was actually not the next video I planned on doing. I actually tried to record part of another photo idea style video yesterday and the photo did not go to plan, or at least the first one I tried did not go to plan to say the least. So I thought I'll postpone that one, I'll do this one first and then I'll get back to it. Um, sometimes photos just do not go to plan and they don't turn out as you imagined them in your head or you can't make what you thought about in your head. But anyway, in this video, I want to bring it back to street photography because it is something that we do a lot of, or at least we did do a lot of it before this whole quarantine thing. So one thing I enjoy watching people do is editing pictures. There's a lot of people we follow that do little photo editing sessions of recent pictures they've got, and it, it is kind of cool to watch. It's also cool to see their process, and you also tend to learn a lot. So I thought I'd pick a few of our favorite pictures from our travels over the past six months or so, re-edit those pictures and hopefully you guys will learn something from watching me doing it and it'll be interesting to see whether i end up with the same outcome that i did originally because obviously i've learned a lot over the six months when it comes to photography and editing yeah it's always cool just to see whether the photo is similar or completely different than the original i've got a little bit of a different setup going on here by the way i just couldn't find somewhere to sit so this is going to have to do and I've got the little lapel mic on. Hopefully that improves the audio a little bit. So I'm a little bit far away to be talking into the mic. Hopefully it improves it. Let me know below in the comments. But anyway, let's jump in the Lightroom and edit some photos. All right, so we've picked a few photos. This one is definitely one of our favorites. Christina actually shot this and it was in Thailand in Bangkok. I believe this was the main market. I can't remember, we took a lot of photos, but I'll put the name on screen because I cannot remember every place that we've been, but she just spotted this woman. She was in really nice lighting and she just had a good kind of pose going on and there was people in between us and her. So look kind of cool. So let's see. First of all, definitely to brighten it up a little bit. Probably about there, looks pretty good. Bring the highlights down a little bit. Her face, the light was, I mean, it's a pretty decent light on her face right there. It's pretty sharp for 1 60th. Christina done a pretty good job of keeping this still. From a distance, it looks, it looks pretty damn sharp. Once you zoom in, you can see a little bit of motion, but it's pretty damn good. I'll bring those shadows up a little bit. And I always check the whites by holding the Alt key on Windows. I think that's, I'm not sure what that is on Mac, but when if you drag to the right, you'll see once you start seeing those little um, dots on your screen, like part of it's actually pure white, then you can let go and do the same with the black, except going down the way you can see that we've now got some solid blacks in there. Um, texture, I tend to put up between five and ten normally and then clarity i actually like to bring down but some images i like clarity but lately i've been preferring to put it down a little bit just because i think it makes your pictures look better almost like more professional whereas if you just boost the clarity way up it kind of ruins the shot sometimes a little bit of d is in there but i'm actually going to use so i've been working on a new preset because we're still we're still trying to find well i think we found our style that we like um, since we started traveling, we've been, obviously we've made a lot of presets and we've been trying different ones out and we like them all, but we kind of want to have our, our own sort of style that we stick to. So instead of using all the different presets, I've kind of been using one a bit more mainly. Um, and it's a new one, which we will be adding to preset packs soon. I'm not sure if it'll work on this one as well. It looks pretty good. I could go for it. The original one I went for was actually our underground preset. No, it actually wasn't underground. It was the icy preset, which I do like on this picture. <laughs> so it's hard to know. Sometimes it's hard to know whether you want to edit it with just one of your random presets that you like or whether you're posting it to Instagram and want it to match in um, with a certain look. So, I mean, already that looks 10 times better. They are kind of similar to be fair. So I think, I think I will go with the icy extra pop one just because it's what I originally edited it with, and I do still like the original picture, so I'm gonna go with that, and we can see what happens. See, it has adjusted some of these settings, so I'm gonna put those back a little bit. It's a pretty moody shot, to be fair. I'll drag these down a little bit. And I'm actually gonna crop this first, so obviously, if it was for Instagram, it would be a four by five. And you just need to remember that when you're taking pictures, especially like this, to not zoom in if you have a zoom lens or not stand too close so that your subject's taking up the whole shot when you're looking through your screen. Because 
when you bring it in and you go to crop, if I had a made her full screen or if Christina had a made her full screen, the crop would have cut off too much of the photo, but this is pretty much perfect. The guy's arm is still in the foreground. This other guy's shoulder we're shooting past is still in shot. And also the woman in the background, which kind of add to it as well. Give that Margaret kind of vibe going on. So far, the settings look pretty damn close. The curve is pretty much what I would do now. I am going to take this little bottom point, which is the darkest parts of the image, and instead of fading them out, I'm just going to keep them as solid black because I think that kind of gives a moodier vibe to it. I'm not really going to mess with the colors because they look pretty good. Sharpening, I am going to boost up to 40 is what I normally do. And then another little tip is when you're sharpening your image, obviously pick. I think these are kind of the right, the stats that it defaults to. I normally have it on 40. Um, just because any more I feel like can be a little bit too much. But then what I do is I bring, I come down here to the masking part, hold alt and then drag so that you can see exactly what it's actually sharpening because you don't want the whole image to be sharpened. It's just not necessary. And also parts of your image that have that nice bokeh, you don't want to be sharpening that. There's no need to. If anything, you want to smooth it out even more. So I'm just dragging right up and normally in around 60, 70 picks out your subject pretty well, especially when you've got good depth in your image like this one. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but it definitely sharpens up her and her facial features a bit. Facial features. Um, there is a little bit of vignetting with this preset. I'm just going to add a little bit more. Also make sure that you feather your uh, vignette in just a bit because if you go too harsh on it, there's nothing worse than being able to see the circle. Like if I drag the whole way down, you can just see that that's clearly been added to the picture and it takes away from it a little bit. You want to kind of make it look as natural as you can. That's actually almost too, a little bit too much. Yeah, that's pretty good. You can still see the people in the background, but it definitely draws the attention more to the woman in the center. I mean, I'm pretty happy with those colors already. I'm gonna go in and do some adjustments with a brush, especially to her eyes. Another little tip when you're doing this is use the brush, draw over the entire eye. Well, this is how I do it anyway. It's pretty quick and it seems to always work very well. Draw over the entire eye, pick iris enhance, but make sure to put the saturation down because you don't want to be saturating the white part of the eyes. You want to keep them white leave it at that and then just go in and do another adjustment when you zoom in close in this image you can see that it's not as sharp as you would like but you can completely get away with it especially from a distance draw over just the pupil our pupils are quite dark in this but there is a little bit of reflection going on there so draw over one eye draw over the other eye just the pupil sorry and pick iris enhance again and there we go just add it a little bit i mean there's not that much color in her eyes but if there was, if her eyes had to be more lit up or if she had to be looking in the direction of the light, you really would have noticed it. Still makes a difference even from there. And what I'm going to do is draw over her entire face and just add a little bit of clarity to it. I believe I've done that in the original image and it kind of... Normally you don't want like the shadows on your face, but I think this makes this image look a bit more dramatic because the lighting's obviously coming from one side here. And I think it makes it look a little bit more dramatic looking. As long as you don't draw over the eyes, but roughly around most of her face and a little bit in her neck, just accentuates the light a little bit and looks pretty cool. Bring this all the way down and then the lighting's pretty good. So I'm just going to add clarity and you can see it just, just makes it a little bit more dramatic. I wouldn't always do this. I tend to do it on the person or their outfit just because it makes the light stand out a little bit more on it. I think that looks pretty damn cool there. Also gonna add a little bit of texture to her hair. She is quite far away, but you can still clearly see the texture of the hair and I'm just gonna enhance that even more. It really is much handier if you have a mouse doing this, but I do not have one. So I'm gonna bring up highlights in her hair a little bit and then I'm gonna add some texture and a little bit of clarity, but not too much. Pretty damn good. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna maybe draw just a little bit over her shirt here but not too much because i want to keep the attention on her face i'm not going maybe into just as much detail but pretty much maybe not spending just as long on it as i did before but it should look pretty damn close 
yeah and if you add a little bit of clarity it just it just makes things a bit more dramatic looking i mean i'm pretty damn happy with that from that kind of yellowy glow on her face to a bit more of a dramatic kind of whitish light whitish bluish light and i think that just gives off that kind of nighttime market vibe a little bit more i'm pretty happy with that i think i'll leave it there because i do want to edit a few and i don't want this video to last all day but that's that one before and after Um, I have brought in a few other ones, but I'm not sure which one to edit. Ooh, that's a good, solid photo. Um, okay, let's go with... Okay, let's go for this one. This was actually um, shot in Cebu in the Philippines, and it was this little guy looking back at Christina from the Jeepney, and we have got this. We've talked about this multiple times as being one of our favourite photos. Just the perfect timing for him to look round and... Christina snapped it and it's pretty damn sharp. Shutter speed could have been a little bit higher, but pretty damn good there. Um, okay, let's go. So first of all, I need to brighten this thing up. I feel like I've edited this a few times before, but anyway, see him again. Normally at the start, I do these similar kind of adjustments just to see, it gives you a good kind of spot to start off from. And then you can adjust things from there. Quite, it was a little underexposed this shot, but that is no problem. Yeah, definitely one of our favourite shots from our travels. There's just some shots that you just remember, and definitely because we actually filmed this one, I just remember the whole process of getting it and how happy Christina was when she actually got it and looked at the camera. It was like, yes, it's sharp, and he was looking directly at the camera, which is always good. The crop on this one, I, think, I actually think I've used different crops on this, but I'm not sure. Do I go for 16 by 9? I feel like there's a little bit too much room on the left hand side so if I go with something like that you can still see a lot of people in the shot but I do want to make sure he's in the center. I think that's probably the best crop. So yeah I normally do these basic adjustments then I flick through the presets and see which one I like and um, I'm going to take a look at our new one. See I do quite like that too. There is a few settings in this that I adjust straight away because I am still working on this preset but I do like that. I believe the original one we went for was the vintage vibes, as far as I know. Yeah, it was, which also looks cool. But but for the sake of the video, I am going to use the new one because I kind of do want to work on it as well. But I think the colors are kind of where I want them to be. But I do not want the clarity to be that high, It'd be a little softer looking, something like that. And so I think the shadows need to come down a little bit, make it a bit more dramatic looking. And straight away, I know that I want to get a little bit of a graduated filter coming down here because this bit just takes away from the little boy in the picture. So I'm going to drag down, darken the top part, and I'm going to do the same on the bottom to draw attention up to him. And I probably will do a radial filter too. So already it's drawing the attention to that line across the middle of the photo. Probably brighten this up a little bit more. Right, so this is one of the pictures where I am going to put the clarity up a little bit just because I think it makes it look a little bit more dramatic. And um, what else must I do? So sharpening looks pretty damn good. Put it down a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is... I think I'm going to do my graduated fillers. No, I'm actually going to do his eyes first because I feel like that's one of the main things that actually transforms. Whoa. Transforms these type of pictures. What is going on? use the brush tool on his eyes. Apologies if I'm blabbering here, this is kind of just what happens when you're trying to explain but trying to edit and think of what you want to do at the same time. You just end up kind of blabbering a little bit. So same again with the eyes and already that is maybe a little bit too strong. Just for this part of his eye is just a little bit too white. I'm going to bring that down to 0.2 because you, you want to keep it looking real. That's pretty good there. Yeah, so recently we've definitely been going for more of the less saturation look. Um, the difference in before and after already, yeah, definitely takes a lot of those colors away, but I like it. It's definitely moody and we're kind of, we both kind of like the moody vibe. So we're going to go for that a little bit more. Next thing I'm going to do is a radial filter. Sometimes I do these things in different order. It just depends. Literally, there's no real reason behind the order that I'm doing it in. Pretty damn good there. 
you just need to watch when you're doing radio filters that you don't make it too harsh. The same with the vignette, and this is kind of just another way to make your vignette a bit more accurate around your subject. Um, I'm gonna do it like that, and I'm also gonna just bring the texture and the clarity down a little bit on everything other than the boy, because there isn't that much depth in this one, so by doing that, it, it almost kind of fakes a little bit of depth, so you're just kind of blurring everything else, taking the focus off everything else. Just slightly though, don't overdo it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this radial filter, invert it, and feather it right the full way up. And I'm gonna move this in almost just around him, something like that should be pretty good. And then I'm gonna put the exposure up a little bit, highlights up a little bit. And I'm gonna actually boost the clarity up a little bit just on him. So I think that makes him stand out a lot more. And just the shadows a little bit. I'm also gonna use a little bit of the adjustment brush just on his hair to make it add a little bit more texture. And it also kinda, see the way there's like, the light's kind of shining off his hair. Well, this will emphasize that a little bit more. Don't want to go overboard in this because it can look a little bit fake looking if you go too harsh. I'm just going to put the texture up a little bit and probably add a little bit <clears throat> to the highlights. So highlights up, I'm going to actually put a little bit of exposure up too. And shadows up a little bit. Whoa, that's too much. Texture, it almost looks like he has grey hair, <laughs> which is not really what I want. Hmm. I don't really want him to look like he has grey hair. And a little bit of warmth to it. I mean, it does kind of still look like he has grey hair a little bit, which I'm not massively into. Hmm. I'm just going to put it up a little bit because I do like it. I just don't like that it looks like he has grey hair, but let's see what that does. It's very slight, but... It definitely adds a little bit. All right, what else do I need to do? I think I'm just gonna draw over his face with the adjustment brush and add in a little bit of clarity again like I did in the last one. Like I said, some pictures you need it, some pictures you don't. Well, my camera just cut off before that last part, but what I did do was add another adjustment brush and just drew over the little boy's face a little bit and just added a little bit of clarity up the highlights in the shadows a wee bit and then just brought the blacks down a little bit to kind of even it out and this is where we are now. Um, I'm pretty damn happy with where it is. What I might actually do is add a little bit of a gradient filter coming in from this side just because that yellow is very bright and I'm gonna do the exact same on the other side and that will just emphasize the subject even more. I mean, we're not far away there. It's pretty damn good. I'm actually just gonna add a little bit of smoothness to his face. It's hard to know, but I'm pretty happy with that. I'll let you decide, which one do you think is better? The original edit with the vintage preset or the new one, which I did spend a little less time on, but let me know anyway. Okay, what have we got next? Okay, so this one, so this one is definitely one of my favorites. It's one of those simple kind of minimal picks. It's just a guy along the street at the market washing his dishes, organizing his plates and stuff in his little stall and it's lit up kind of nicely, the sign at the top. And then I used a pretty slow shutter because I kind of wanted to show that it was along the street and I got the car flying past, kind of motion blurred out uh, in the foreground. And somehow with 1 25th of a second, I still managed to keep this one spot on and I don't have the steadiest hand, so quite happy with that one. Anyway, first of all, what we will do is go for a crop and I think I will yeah, maybe do a square crop on this one. No, I won't. I'm gonna do a 16 by nine because I took it landscape and I think it does work better landscape. So yeah, something like that. Get him right in the center. There is a little bit of space on the left hand side actually that I don't really need. So maybe go something like that. And then it does need to be leveled out. And if you come down here, uh, to transform and click, you can click through these and they tend to do a pretty good job of lining things up. That looks pretty damn good, although the roof looks a little bit off. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. All right, first of all, I'm gonna do the same thing again, brighten it up, highlights down, shadows up a little bit, whites are pretty good, and the blacks are pretty good. And then I'm gonna flick through my presets. So this is one of those ones where it's kind of hard not to go with that blue look for me anyway, because I know once I pick the underground preset for this one, 
you get that kind of look and if you go a little bit extra with the underground plus you can get a pretty cool dramatic look and that's kind of more how you imagine that those markets especially in thailand kind of look so it's hard not to go with those but but just for the sake of the video and me wanting to try out the new preset i'm going to use it and see how it differs compared to the original edit so once again i'm going to keep the clarity on this one maybe around five let's see you can kind of go for that dreamy look with the lights which does look kind of cool in this one to be fair that's just too much clarity yeah i'll maybe go minus five it gives a wee bit of a dreamy kind of glowy look to those lights um you can also increase that glowiness by putting the dehaze down a little bit but it does get a little bit too much you can go overboard with it very easy so put the dehaze up a little bit and what else bring those shadows up a little bit too I'm still not quite sure if I like how faded the yellow is. I normally I like desaturated, but I think in this case, I might need to boost that yellow up a bit or else change the hue of it a little bit. Yeah, like it does look better with a bit more saturation going on. Yeah, that looks better. Um, what else? So I think a bit of vignetting in this one will also look good because it's gonna be focused around him. Again, put the feathering up and that already draws the attention into him and just gonna add a little bit of clarity over him completely. Again, I'm doing these a little bit quicker just to show you what I would actually do, but without taking ages to do it. So a little bit of clarity just over his whole body. Whoa, did not mean to do that. I'm trying to get too messy with this just cause sometimes you can see a little glow around someone once you draw over them with the adjustment brush and make adjustments just to one specific area. But what I'm gonna do is just a little bit of brightness around him. Maybe a little bit of saturation, a little bit of texture, and yeah, just a little bit of clarity around him and it makes him stand out a little bit more. So now I'm going to go for a graduated filter and I'm going to drag up from the bottom. Again, this is all to make your subject stand out, which is kind of what most of the adjustments I make are for. And I think most people edit in their photos, the things you're doing are to kind of draw the viewer's eye to whatever you want them to see in the picture, whatever your subject is. And that's what these little things do. Graduated filter, I don't really want to do one from the top just because I like the light on his sign, but I will do a graduated filter again. Okay, did you hear that little noise there? This little noise? Okay. Well, that was my mic. Completely running out of battery and cutting off, and yeah, that's always fun. But anyway, I still have the video footage, so I'll just talk you through what I did. So after I added the graduated filter on the bottom, I then created a radial filter which again is used to draw the attention to your subject in the picture. Um, I actually just did one on this picture and it was just to darken the outer parts of the image. Uh, I have no idea what I was saying right there. Probably something really informative, but anyway. But yeah, I added one to add a little bit of darkness around the outside of the image. I didn't duplicate it and do the center like I did on the previous photo because the center of this image was already bright enough. Then really the only other thing I did do was adjust the white balance slightly because I felt like it was a little off. I literally, I think I warmed it up just a little bit, um, added a little bit of magenta just because it was a little bit green. But besides that, I didn't really do anything else. I was pretty happy with how the picture turned out. I think I was talking here about how lowering the clarity a little bit can give you that kind of dreamy look around lights and stuff in pictures, which looks pretty cool. But yeah, I was pretty happy with that result. So. Let me know, what do you think? Do you think this edit is better than the original edit? I'll pop them both on screen now and you can let me know. But then I blabbered on a bit more just talking about how interesting it is to see the difference between a picture I edited like six months ago and then now. And just ask you guys to drop your opinions below on, on all three photos. Do you prefer the original edits that I done or do you prefer the new edits? It would just be cool to, to hear your opinions below because I'm honestly not sure myself but it was kind of cool editing them again and hopefully you guys learned something from the process which was the whole point of doing the video. There's just some things that you learn after years of editing pictures, things that you just didn't do at the start and then other things that you look back on and just think why, why was I doing that on my pictures but that is the process of learning photography and photo editing so yeah like I said hopefully it was helpful. If you did enjoy it give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos from us and as we always say, take it easy, don't be a stranger.